Welcome again, dear students. I am Dr. Kaleem Ahmed, Assistant Professor, uh, Department of Wildlife Sciences, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. In today's lecture, uh, we will discuss uh, the important topic that is India as a mega diverse nation. So, understanding uh, mega diversity starts with understanding biodiversity itself, and we will discuss this in many lectures that biodiversity uh, includes. Uh, all the plants, animal species on the planets, their genetic differences uh, and the ecosystems where they form uh, interconnected uh, communities. So, uh, biodiversity is, uh, we can say is not uh, distributed uniformly across our planets. Uh, so, uh, mega diverse countries actually are those uh, which contain a majority of the planets natural wealth. Uh, some countries especially we can say in the tropics host much bigger concentration of the biodiversity as we compared with uh, other countries. So, uh, there are about uh, 17 mega diverse countries in the world and together these 17 nations are home to between 60 and 80 percent of the life on earth. So, the aim of this classification uh, is to show how a small number of the countries possess a great proportion of the global biodiversity or global diversity, which in turn means they have a much greater political responsibilities for environmental conservation and management. The, this concept of uh, mega diverse was aired for the first time in 1988 uh, at a biodiversity conference held at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington DC. Its aim was to identify the biologically wealthiest nation on earth crucial to the planet's survival. So, to qualify uh, as a mega diverse country, the main criteria is endemism. We call a species endemic if it lives naturally and exclusively in a defined geographical areas and found nowhere else. That is, such countries host a species that cannot found elsewhere on the planets. As a function of this, mega diverse country must fulfill the following two criteria: have at least 5,000 endemic plant species, have a marine ecosystem within its borders, then the species is considered to be a mega diverse country. According to uh, Conservation International, uh, about 70% uh, of the world flora and fauna exist in only 17 mega diverse countries. These nations comprise just under 10 percent of the surface of the earth. The mega diverse countries of the world are you can see Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Mexico, Democratic Republic of Congo, Madagascar, uh, Indonesia, Australia, India, we have China, we have Malaysia, we have New Guinea, we have United uh, States, we have Philippines. Venezuela and the South Africa. So, these are the we can say 17 uh, mega diverse countries of the world that you can see in this slide. And this is the map showing the mega diverse countries of the world. You can see the highlighted portions, the green highlighted portions are the countries which are actually mega diverse countries of the world. India uh, is uh, one of these uh, mega diverse countries with 2.4 uh, percent of the land area accounting for 7 to 8 percent of the species of the world, including we can say about 91,000 species of the animals and 45,500 species of plants that have been documented in its 10 biogeographic regions. Of these, 12.16 percent of mammals, 4.4 percent are birds, 45.8 percent are reptiles, 55.8 percent of amphibians and 33 percent of Indian plants are endemic being found nowhere else in the world. If you compare uh, Indian biodiversity uh, with the world's uh, then uh, in mammals we can say worldwide uh, there are roughly we can say uh, 6400 known species of the mammals and if you compare it with the India is home to approximately 426 species of the mammals. And if we compare with the reptiles worldwide we can say there are more than 10,000 uh, species of the reptiles and India is about 
have uh, 432 species of reptiles and in case of amphibians worldwide there are approximately 8000 known species of the amphibians and India is home to about 284 species of amphibians. And in, uh, if you compare it with the flowering plants worldwide, we have uh, estimates suggest that there are around uh, 3,52,000 species of the flowering plants. And uh, in India, boost a diverse flora, we can with approximately uh, 15,000 to 18,000 species of the flowering plants. And if you compare it with the fishes worldwide, we are roughly 34,000 known species of the fishes. And India is estimated to have uh, 2546 species of the of uh, fishes and in if we compare it with the birds worldwide there are approx approximately 10000 to 11000 species of the birds and if we compare it with india is home to about 13 to 1400 species of the birds let's discuss uh, the reason uh, why india is so much diverse and let's start from its ecological diversity india we can say diverse landscape uh, comprises uh, several distinct biomes including we can say a tropical rainforest we have mangrove uh, swamps we have alpine meadows we have deserts we have grasslands and we have coastal ecosystems so each of these uh, ecosystems sport a unique assemblage of plant and animal species many of which are found nowhere else on earth the Western Ghats, we can say our uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, harbors immense biodiversity with thousands of the plant species, numerous endemic amphibians, birds and the mammals. The region's dense forest and high rainfall make it one of the most biological diverse areas in the world. Another of the Sundarbans located in the Delta region of the Ganges and the Brahmaputra River is the largest mangroves forest globally and home to Bengal tiger, saltwater crocodiles and numerous bird species. The Himalayan regions with its alpine meadows and temperate forest sports iconic species like the snow leopard, like Himalayan musk deers, like Himalayan brown bears. Then Indian rivers such as we can say Gangs, uh, Brahmaputra and Yamuna are lifelines for millions of the peoples and sustain diverse aquatic ecosystems including freshwater dolphins, gharials and various fish species. In case of we can say flora, India is home to over 18,000 flowering plant species make it one of the world most botanically diverse regions. The western Ghats and the eastern Himalayas are particularly rich in we can say plant diversity with thousands and thousands of we can say endemic uh, species of the plants. India's forests include tropical evergreen, deciduous mangroves, mountain forests, each one of these sporting a unique assemblage of a plant life. India's uh, we can say uh, also boost an impressive era of animal species including we can say iconic uh, uh, megafauna such as Bengal tigers, our national animal, Indian elephants, uh, rhinosaurus, Asiatic lions. The country is also uh, rich in avian diversity that I have already discussed with you with our more than uh, 13,000 to 1,400 bird species. Uh, recording including, including numerous uh, endemics like the Indian Peafowl and the Malabar Dragon. Additionally, India's uh, rivers and the coastal areas harbor diverse uh, aquatics and uh, marine life including we can say freshwater dolphins, uh, crocodiles and uh, coral reefs. India is also a unique ecosystem. India's varied we can say topography has given rise to wide range of the ecosystems from we can say high altitude alpine meadows to arid deserts and the coastal wetlands. We can say the Sundarbans mangrove forest shared with we can say uh, Bangladesh is the largest mangrove ecosystems globally and serve as a crit critical habitat for numerous species including we can say uh, our national animal the Bengal tiger. Having we can say uh, four biodiversity hotspots in India uh, making them uh, as a uh, 
mega diverse nation of the world because we will discuss in detail, detail these biodiversity hotspots in the coming lectures here i will i will give you the brief uh, overview of that because why we can consider india as a mega diverse na nations india is also uh, has four biodiversity hotspots a biodiversity hotspots is actually uh, an area that is uh, uh, both high in biodiversity and under significant threats india is home to four biodiversity hotspots the himalayas the western ghats the indo burma and sunda lands we can say there is high level of endemism uh, in these hotspots meaning many species here are found never else in the world these hotspots also play a crucial role uh, for making india as a uh, mega diverse nations as well as the role in the conservations as protecting them means preserving a large portion of the indian unique biodiversity so we can say habitat loss uh, and uh, human pressures in these areas make them priorities for the national and international conservation efforts as uh, india is uh, one of the mega diverse nation of the world and it's also provide us a lot of we can say ecosystem services actually ecosystem services are the benefits uh, that humans uh, uh, drive from nature which are essential for well being and the survivals of the human beings key ecosystem services that actually provided by the indian biodiversity are uh, just uh, highlighted here the forest we can say carbon storage uh, oxygen production timber non timber products like honey and medicinal plants these are all of the things that we actually get from the forest and these are the ecosystem services another is wetlands the wetlands provide us uh, water purifications flood regulations and habitats for the aquatic species so these all we can say uh, there are n number of the others we can say ecosystem services that we actually get from the uh, wetlands and other is coastal areas we can say uh, protection from the we can say coastal erosions uh, breeding ground from the fishes and sports for the uh, mangrove ecosystem that are crucial for the well being of the human mankind and other is grasslands we can say help us in soil fertility uh, love, uh, help us in the livestock grazings and also uh, these grasslands are habitat for the unique uh, species like black buck and uh, another is we can say rivers these rivers provide a lot of ecosystem services to us like we can say fresh waters uh, sport fisheries uh, and uh, also provide an essential services that are we can say very very essential for our agriculture so these services contribute to indian economy and uh, well being of its peoples especially those peoples which are actually living in the uh, rural areas or the rural communities peoples <clears throat> india's uh, we can say culture diversity and biodiversity india's culture diversity is we can say uh, intertwined with its uh, biodiversity also with uh, we can say many traditional practices and beliefs uh, centered around nature conservations uh, and reverence of for the wildlife uh, we can say sacred groves uh, rivers uh, mountains are often protected due to their spiritual significance uh, we can say that actually contributing to the biodiversity conservation efforts of the india another we can say despite uh, uh, this uh, its mega diversity uh, india faces significant conservation challenges we can say including uh, that we are, that we already discussed in the previous lecture when we discussed the threats of biodiversity let's uh, remind these things the habitat loss uh, the fragmentation we can say poaching uh, pollution uh, and climate change are some of the uh, we can say uh, threats or conservation challenges that actually india is actually facing another rapid urbanization Uh, industrialization uh, and population growth uh, apply immense pressure on natural ecosystems and, and thus threatening uh, the biodiversity uh, hotspots and endangered species uh, of the indias so we can say uh, what are the conservation efforts that we need is india's approach to biodiversity conservations has and he has already done many many things regarding the biodiversity conservations i'm just go, going to highlight few of them so india's approach to biodiversity conservation includes the establishment of uh, protected areas just like national parks uh, wildlife sanctuaries conservation reserves 
community reserves, biosphere reserves that have already discussed with you in the protected area networks. So, so specific programs we can say has also been launched to conserve and to protect the biodiversity such as uh, Project Tiger, uh, Project Elephant, Project Snow Leopard. Uh, are aimed actually at conserving flagship species by protecting their habitat and also uh, reducing the human wildlife conflicts. So we can say that this uh, uh, biological diversity acts and uh, uh, the <clears throat> establishment of the biodiversity uh, management committees by involving uh, local communities uh, in the conservation efforts uh, is also a, we can say welcome uh, steps uh, that actually helps in the sustainable use of the uh, resources. Another is we can say uh, community driven conservation uh, efforts plays an important role uh, because uh, where the peoples actually come forward or where the pe uh, peoples uh, play a key role. Uh, in protecting ecosystems such as sacred groves uh, in the forests. So we can say uh, ex situ conservation efforts uh, just like in zoos uh, and in the botanical gardens uh, to protect species outside their natural habitats and contributes to the breeding programs also helps immensely in the biodiversity conservation of, uh, efforts. So all these things uh, in situ and ex situ conservation efforts we already discussed a full fly lectures uh, in this particular course. So we can say uh, this uh, uh, community based conservation initiatives uh, uh, by involving uh, uh, lo local communities uh, in biodiversity conservation uh, and sustainable resource management uh, have sh already shown some kind of the promising results uh, in bi India's biodiversity conservation efforts. So uh, uh, these giant forest management programs, ecotourism initiatives, uh, sustainable we can say livelihood projects uh, also help to ease the pressure some kind of the pressure on the natural resources and they also help us to empowering the uh, local communities. So we can say by these all the, the, these things India is actually uh, also we can say parties are the number of the international organizations just like we can say uh, CITES, uh, we have ICNs, uh, Ramsar conventions that shows India's actually commitment uh, for protecting the this uh, rich biodiversity uh, of India's that is actually called as the mega diverse nation of the world. In conclusions, uh, we can say uh, India's status as a mega diverse country is, uh, is uh, actually evident uh, in its rich era of ecological and cultural diversity. We can say by taking up its natural as well as its uh, cultural heritage and uh, adopting a holistic approach. Uh, to conservation and uh, development, India can actually continue to serve as a global exemplar of the biodiversity conservation and sustainable living. With this, uh, we end today's lecture and in the coming days, uh, we will discuss some new interesting topic. Thank you dear students. Thank you very much.